It has been a year since the wind of change swept across public establishments in the country. At the office of the Presidential Amnesty Program, the change process began with President Muhammad Buhari's appointment of Brigadier General Paul Terela Boro as leader and chaperone. The special advisor to the President on Niger Delta and coordinator of the Presidential Amnesty Program has a Herculean but achievable task. He has the duty to ensure the success of the President's commitment to deliver change and ensure progress in the Niger Delta. This would require the consolidation of activities within the amnesty program to improve on the gains of peace, stability and human capacity development in the region. The fact that I'm recognized to make a difference in the new appointment given to me is a revelation that the president had confidence in me. Bringing it to bear on the amnesty program. The program is on course and a lot has been achieved within the short period that I took over. It is imperative to build and energize a work environment that aligns with the task at hand. Here, the leadership realizes the imperatives for a focused and committed staff to boost service delivery. These are meetings where we review activities in the last two days and then project for the next two days into the future and then sometimes even a week ahead. So with that way of working, everybody um, is, is on board and all hands are on deck to pursue the, the, the target goals of, the, uh, of General Boru. Administering a motivated workforce has a multiplier effect on productivity. The last one year, the Presidential Amnesty Office has demonstrated how success can be fought for and achieved even when the odds are many and the challenge is tedious. The first that thing that I did when I took over was to establish a biometric uh, investigation about the program. And immediately thereafter, I started ensuring that uh, the tension caused before my appointment was now adequately resolved. That tension was due to a delay in, in payment of uh, stipends and uh, tuition fees of the students, as well as uh, owed, uh, amounts owed to um, vendors uh, due to uh, due to the fact that they've carried out some services and then they, they would have been paid. So I ensure that a verification exercise was conducted to ascertain credibility and uh, sustainability. It's still ongoing because of the, uh, the massive area it covers. We're covering all the nine states. There are nine states under the uh, presidential amnesty program in the Niger Delta region. By laying a solid foundation, the stage was set for real progress. First was the rather unexpected but gracious gesture by President Muhammad Buhari extending the amnesty program beyond the initial timeline of December 2015. But then, perhaps, the more conspicuous achievement of the Presidential Amnesty Office in the last year lie in its reintegration drive. I'm happy to say that well over 50% uh, of the persons that are captured in the program have been reintegrated in terms of capacity building, in terms of uh, skills and acquisition uh, uh, programs, as well as uh, stabilization. Stabilization, I think, is the key because since I took over, I'm bold to say that the ex-agitators have not taken it upon themselves to prevent um, social and economic life uh, the disrupt in the entire Niger Delta. The 
The records reflect the changes and showcase a commitment by the federal government to cater for the ex-agitators that have renounced violence by empowering them to regenerate the Niger Delta region economically and socially. Of the 30,000 delegates captured in the program, over 17,000 have been successfully trained. 13,498 were trained in various vocational fields. Another 1,177 delegates involved in the educational training scheme have graduated from distinguished tertiary institutions, both in Nigeria and abroad. There are currently 785 delegates undergoing vocational training and 2,872 delegates in various universities onshore and offshore. The delegates are all drawn from the nine states of the Niger Delta, and the trainings, whether in education or vocation, span a spectrum of specialized fields. These fields have direct bearing on development in the Niger Delta, and the idea is to boost the region's chances of domesticating specialized skilled labor. Right now we have delegates who you may even be surprised if we introduce some to you that this a delegate. They are as humble as any other person can be now. They've, some of them have achieved um, educational levels which they never ever dreamt of. We have people, some delegates doing master's programs locally and overseas. We have graduates from with first degrees. We have delegates who are undergoing skill acquisition training and so on. So when you look at the sum total of this, you realize delegates have been lifted from where they were to a pedestal um, which far outweighs the, the, the path they are trodden in the past. I know of uh, delegates that have been trained in, in piloting in the field of aviation as well as aircraft engineers. Those are also land catering because they are also uh, in that uh, uh, field. They are also doing a lot. As we speak, the uh, chef of uh, Chelsea Hotel in Abuja here is a beneficiary of this program. One of the key staff of Central Bank is also a beneficiary of this amnesty program. So many other fields of, of uh, endeavor we have beneficiaries of, of this program. In fact, the amnesty program is a stabilizing force in Niger Delta. The presidential amnesty team has worked tirelessly to ensure that more of the trained delegates are reintegrated into civil life presently and contributing meaningfully to society. In the last year, under Brigadier General Paul Boro as coordinator, a total of 1,077 delegates were empowered to start small businesses. The ultimate agenda is to grow a large population of skilled youth and entrepreneurs with capacity to redress the development challenges in the Niger Delta. My name is John Paul um, from Koshba. Yeah, my tra training actually started from 2012. Uh, initially, I went to Rio Jordanian Air Academy in Jordan. And from there, I proceeded to Casa Aero in Casablanca for my type rating in the Boeing 737 Classic. So right now, um, I'm done and as you can see, I'm employed as a first officer in this airline. Thank the federal government of Nigeria for giving us this opportunity to actually see our dreams come true. I actually got a phone call from the head of training of Royal Amarok. He recommended him personally. He actually called me on his own personal phone. And uh, he got very good results, did very well. The line training, well, like most of our co pilots straight out of school, is a bit up and down, but I don't know where he pulls through. And now he's an asset to the airline. It is expected that the skills they've learned will make them add value to the environment where they come from. This is the, the bottom line of uh, the amnesty program. That is the, the mandate of the amnesty program to ensure that 30,000 ex agitators that are captured in the program are given different skills and empowered so that they can reintegrate the program. One area that has remained of utmost importance to the Amnesty Office is agriculture. General Boro introduced uh, new programs in the office. 
and uh, especially uh, most important here is the agriculture program. He's someone who has a uh, passion for agriculture and uh, he believes strongly that uh, agriculture can uh, uh, you know, sustain the region and sustain the entire country. So he is practically moving the, uh, the beneficiaries from a mindset on you know, acquiring training on oil and gas. Now he's moving them towards agricultural sector for them to acquire skills in the agri sector. And he also doing that by also liaising, especially with the Minister of Agriculture and uh, uh, some other agencies to uh, drive his uh, very strong belief in the agri sector. Almost every avenue that I have to speak, I mention this agriculture as a way of uh, transforming the lives of beneficiaries of the amnesty program. And uh, the program, the office rather, is in partnership with the Minister of Agriculture to revamp the Paramabri rice farm in Bayesa State. In fact, the, the minister mentioned that Chinese persons, people who are good in agriculture, have been contacted to come and help in revamping the, the farm. It will create a huge space for employment and to capture food security in Bayesa State alone. And we replicate such uh, in other states. I was in Cross River State and I discussed with the governor about the need to establish various farms, you know, in the state in order to create both capture food security as well as create job opportunities. And then he agreed to me that he's going to, uh, in fact, that it's already started, but um, uh, we start developing it in order to achieve uh, the issue of uh, food security and job creation. Emmanuel Onoyo Akore typifies the success of the program's reintegration Good component. Stuff. Fingerlings, juveniles, etro, clearance, and hybrid catfish. We even stock tilapia and other species of fish. The exagitator has come quite far since the early days of the program and is living his dream of being a fish farmer, courtesy of the skills acquisition training of the Presidential Amnesty Program. I've always said, okay, after God, now government, government don't do for me too, but me then do for others. So that if most of the ex-militants are like what you're seeing today, there will not be Niger Delta Avengers. Who won't come call me, make a go creek now, go full and do it now. Go follow you carry with gone. When I did, I don't feed them finish. Today, Emmanuel has two fish farms in Ugeli Delta State, both operational and profitable. In nearby Yenegua, the biosated capital, another beneficiary of the program, is doing well. Nani Rubin makes beads and fashion accessories, skills she acquired from her vocational training facilitated by the Amnesty Office.